In this video we're going to look at the most popular funds purchased over the last few months to give us some inspiration for our own portfolios. In this first episode of this series we're going to focus on active funds with a global focus. In the next video we're going to look at more low cost index tracker funds that are really popular and that is a low cost way of investing so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that video. So we're going to look at the most popular funds purchased in the last quarter of 2021 with the big investment platforms Hargreaves, Lansdowne and Interactive Investor and to begin with we're going to look at those funds that are common to both lists. So whilst what is popular with the masses will not guarantee that it is a good investment choice it is useful to know that these funds are really popular with investors so they must be doing something right. These tables show the top 10 funds purchased on each of these platforms. With Hargreaves Lansdowne they are listed in alphabetical order and on Interactive Investor they are listed in rank order. Firm favourites remain on the list which has been the case for quite some time now and Fundsmith Equity continues to top the charts and Bailey Gifford American and Bailey Gifford Positive Change are both popular funds which we're going to look at in more detail in this video. You will note that half of the funds on both lists are active funds and the other half are low cost index tracker funds. Also at least half of the funds have a global focus and funds with a US focus are also popular. On the Hargreaves Lansdowne list, the green star indicates that the fund appears on their Wealth shortlist which was formerly known as the Wealth 50 list. With Interactive Investor, Vanguard funds feature on the list whereas they are absent with the Hargreaves Lansdowne list. This may be down to Interactive Investor picking up some of Vanguard's customers once their portfolio reaches a certain size and the flat platform fee with the Interactive Investor then becomes cheaper than Vanguard's low cost platform fee. It may also be due to Interactive Investor actively promoting Vanguard's products such as these three Vanguard Life Strategy Funds. That said, Hargreaves Lansdowne has recently published that the Vanguard Life Strategy 80 is among the most popular index tracker funds purchased by their clients. We are now going to look at the most popular funds purchased which appear on both lists and these are Fundsmith Equity, Bailey Gifford American, Bailey Gifford Positive Change and Legal and General Technology Index Fund. So starting with Fundsmith Equity. Fundsmith Equity has been topping the charts for quite a long time now and this is despite it having a high ongoing charge of 0.96%. This fund has performed phenomenally well since it was launched. Here I have plotted Fundsmith Equity's performance against a selection of low-cost global index tracker funds so you can see how it has outperformed these low-cost index funds. And these funds I've chosen are Fidelity World Index, Legal and General Global Equity Index and Vanguard Global Equity Index. And Fundsmith Equity has consistently outperformed these other index funds. If you want to know how to create these comparison charts in the Hargreaves Lansdowne platform I have done a video on this because not many people know this facility is there. So it's really useful and really easy to do and I've linked that in the video above and in the description below. When you create these comparison plots you can also see at a glance data tables showing the difference in performance which is really useful and that's shown in these tables here. The discrete calendar year performance is shown at the top and Fundsmith Equity has performed better than these low cost index tracker funds in most years during this five year period. When comparing the cumulative performance over the last five years then Fundsmith Equity has given a much higher return of 125% compared to the others which have returned between 78 and 84% over that same time period. Fundsmith Equity does come with a high ongoing charge and those charges do it away at your investment returns over time and you've got your platform fee on top of that as well. And many of you who watch my channel will know that my mantra is keep your fees as low as possible so that you get to keep the most of your investment returns. Another thing to remember is the more expensive funds become then that does diminish your future returns on that fund as well because the price that you have to pay is so high so that the returns you're getting for each pound or dollar of investment will actually be less. And this comes down to the price to earnings ratio. And this is why I personally prefer low cost index tracker funds that are held within a low cost investment platform. If you want to get an idea of how fees eat away your investment returns you can use the Larry Bates T-Rex score and I've plotted that here for the Fundsmith Equity. 
I calculated the average rate of return on the Fundsmith equity over the last five years and it averaged out at around 18%. So I put that 18% into the T-Rex score here. So here we assume an investment value of 10,000, an 18% rate of return, annual fees of 0.96 for the fund, plus the platform fee of 0.45%, assuming the investment is held with Hargreaves Lansdowne, and a 25 year investment period. The results show that you would only get to keep around 74% of your total investment returns, and you lose nearly 163,000 in fees. The closer your T-Rex score is to 100, the more of your investment returns you get to keep, which is why keeping your fees as low as possible is so important. Other metrics you could use when looking for which funds you want to invest in is the Sharpe Ratio and Alpha. Interactive Investor provides this data and for Fundsmith Equity the Sharpe Ratio is 1.71 and Alpha is 3.08 at the time that I looked up this data. So what makes a good Sharpe Ratio? A Sharpe Ratio of less than 1 is considered bad. From 1 to 1.99 is adequate or good. From 2 to 2.99 very good and anything greater than three is seen as excellent. The higher a fund's Sharpe ratio, the better its returns have been relative to the amount of investment risk taken. With the alpha ratio, an alpha of greater than zero means that the investment has outperformed when adjusted for volatility. So when hedge fund managers talk about having a high alpha, they mean that their managers are good enough to outperform the market. So with Fundsmith Equity, the alpha ratio of three shows that the investments have performed 3% better than the market when compared to a comparable index. So you need to make your own judgment call as to whether high fees are worth the investment performance. Next up is Bailey Gifford American. Bailey Gifford American has been very popular for quite a while now, and this fund invests in disruptive businesses, which has good growth prospects and favors business that like to do things differently. This fund has shown incredible returns over the last five years and this is partly due to the growth style of investment having been greatly in favour. The fund focuses on nine distinct themes of which the largest are the future of commerce, innovative healthcare and new enterprise. This fund has a high ongoing charge but if you choose to invest through Hargreaves Lansdowne you do get a discount on this fund which brings the ongoing charge down to 0.31% which is still high but a good discount of 0.2% is applied. This chart shows performance data plotted against the S&P 500 and the legal and general US index tracker fund, given that this fund aims to outperform the S&P 500 index by 1.5% a year after costs over any five year period. Overall, the fund has shown strong performance, although there are periods of weaker performance and it may not hold up as well as an index fund in a falling market, so that is something to be aware of. In the discrete calendar year performance table shown at the top here, Bailey Gifford American has performed poorly in the last 12 months up to January 2022 compared with the index funds I have plotted it against. So a low cost index tracker fund would have served you better for a fraction of the price over the last 12 months. But remember you do look at the long term when it comes to investing and you need to be comfortable with the fund's objectives, risk level, investment strategy and your own investment goals when you come to choose your investments. With a cumulative performance over the last five years, the fund has returned nearly 276% compared to just over 100% with the S&P 500 and the US index trackers. The Bailey Gifford American Sharpe Ratio is 1.37% at the time I looked up the data and the three year alpha 0.24%. So the Sharpe Ratio suggests that the fund's performance is adequate compared to the investment risk taken on and the alpha ratio of just over zero suggests it has just about outperformed adjusting for volatility. Now we look at Bailey Gifford Positive Change. This fund invests in companies which have the potential to grow significantly and also have a focus on society and environment. So it is more of a sustainable investment fund. Performance since the fund was launched is impressive as shown in this chart here. The fund aims to outperform the MSCI AC World Index as stated in sterling by at least 2% per annum over rolling five year periods. Performance over the last 12 months has been poor compared to the MSCI World Index, 
but the fund performed well in most of the previous years shown in this table. The five-year cumulative performance was nearly 269% compared with just under 84% for the MSCI World Index as shown in the table. This fund is again quite expensive with an ongoing charge of 0.53% but it is by no means the most expensive fund but you will also have your platform fee on top of that. This fund was launched in 2017 so there is limited performance data so we don't know yet how it's going to cope with economic cycles. The investment strategy for the fund is also for growth stocks which are currently in favour but that won't always be the case so we don't know how this fund is going to perform when more defensive stocks become favourable. The three year sharp ratio is 1.71 meaning that the fund's performance is adequate to good and the three year alpha is very high at 7.36 indicating that it has outperformed supremely during that three year period. Past performance is no guarantee of future performance though so do remember that. Lastly in this video we're going to look at the Legal and General Global Technology Index Fund and this is the only low cost index tracker fund passive investment that we're looking at in this video. We'll look at more low cost index tracker funds in the next video in this series. Again this fund appears on the top 10 most popular funds on both the Hargreaves Lansdowne and Interactive Investor lists. This fund is a low cost way to invest in the FTSE World Technology Index and the fund aims to track this index. This fund invests in companies in the developed and advanced emerging markets with a focus in information technology. And because of this focus in the IT industry, it does mean that the fund is heavily weighted to the US market. So if you already have a high exposure to US equity in your portfolio, then this fund may not be suitable for you. It is a good fund if you need to add a bit more exposure to the US market and also exposure to the IT industry if your portfolio is already lacking in that area. This fund fully replicates the FTSE World Technology Index and in the same proportions as well so that really helps it track that index very closely. Microsoft and Apple are no surprise the biggest holdings within this index fund and it has a low ongoing charge of just 0.2% with the Hargreaves Lansdowne platform. In terms of performance over the last 10 years it's delivered a return of 747.29% against 779.04% for the index according to Hargreaves Lansdowne Research. And the average annual return on this fund over the last five years calculated from this table is 28.8%. The table also shows that the fund has tracked the index closely. You do need to be aware that with the fund being heavily focused in US stocks, the fund is going to be sensitive to any changes to the US stock market and also US policies. So that's a quick roundup of the most popular investments with Hargreaves Lansdowne and Interactive Investor and next time we're going to focus on the low cost index tracker funds of which I hold some of them in my own investment accounts so I can speak with first hand experience of the performance of those funds and whether I'm happy with them or not. So don't miss next week's video and I'll leave the last word to the Oracle of Omaha who says a low cost index fund is the most sensible equity investment for the great majority of investors so you don't want to miss next week's video. So hit that notification bell and until then, thanks for watching.